we're standing on an oblate spheroid. Even this yeah. is an oblate spheroid. You see that, people? That's an oblate spheroid. There is much evidence. The, the oblateness, the difference, is um, 42 miles difference in the polar uh, circumference to the equatorial circumference. So if you were to measure the circumference around the equator, it'd be 42 miles more than the circumference around the poles. But did you measure it? This means it's spherical in shape, but not perfectly round. It's slightly bulged at the equator. So, so the equator is a little bit, uh, by a very small percentage, so, a little bit bulging. And then at the top so, and bottom, at the poles, not top and bottom, but then they're smushed a little. That's what that means. It doesn't mean that they're flat. It's a very, very, very oblate sphere of a 42 mile difference between the equatorial Ooh. radius and the polar radius. Um, <clears throat> and the fact is that the Earth has been measured to be an oblate spheroid, and it has been measured oblate. I, I I'd... oblate it's in the middle. Oblate spheroid. It's an oblate spheroid. He said it was oblate. Is an oblate spheroid? Come on. Because the Earth is slightly oblate. It's oblate. I do know that it's oblate. It's oblate. It's, yeah, it's oblate. It's oblate. It's an oblate spheroid. Is an oblate spheroid. Earth is an oblate spheroid. It's an uh, oblate spheroid because the Earth is an oblate spher spheroid. The Earth is an oblate spheroid. In the hood that the Earth is an oblate spheroid. An oblate spheroid. An oblate spheroid. An oblate spheroid. Oblate spheroid. But slightly flattened at the poles and slightly wider at the equator due to its rotation. And measurements taken by satellites mm. confirm the oblate spheroid shape. Oblateness. An oblate spheroid of a circumference of approximately 25,000 miles. Um, it is an oblate spheroid. That we live on an oblate spheroid. No, we live in an oblate spheroid. Uh, an oblate spheroid. An oblate spheroid. <laughs> so it's an oblate spheroid. Uh, I mean, is is an oblate spheroid an oblate spheroid? Mm -hmm. An oblate spheroid is an oblate spheroid. As the Earth is an oblate spheroid, the Earth's an oblate spheroid? Because the Earth's an oblate spheroid. We live on an oblate spheroid. It's very slightly oblate. The slight oblateness of the Earth. That's uh, an oblate spheroid. Is an oblate spheroid. But it's an oblate spheroid. We know that it's an oblate spheroid. It's an oh, oblate spheroid. What? It's an oblate spheroid. Oblate spheroid. And it's an oblate spheroid. Earth is an oblate spheroid. Uh, uh, yes, the Earth is a is an oblate sphere. A rotating oblate spheroid in space. It's an oblate spheroid. An oblate spheroid. Uh, the oblateness and some of the calculations you have to do for great circles and. The Earth is an oblate spheroid with a circumference of approximately twenty five thousand miles or forty thousand kilometers. That oblateness is so small you wouldn't see it in the amount of pixels on the screen. The oblateness uh, is 0.42% difference in the uh, equatorial and polar diameters. It's an oblate spheroid, yes. No, this is, this is a picture of an oblate spheroid. That's slightly larger uh, below the equator than it is above the equator. Slightly wider below the equator. Now we can check that. So we have here to create a circle calculator. This is the 30th uh, latitude north on the prime meridian. And then we calculate the distance to the 179.99 uh, west or east. Doesn't matter because it's a globe. Thirty thousand three hundred thirty-four kilometers, statue miles, eight thousand two hundred eighty-six. Now we move to the 30th latitude south. And calculate again. Oh, thirteen thousand three hundred thirty-four. Thank you, Miles. 8,286. So it's not slightly wider below the equator. <laughs> Moron. There's a 42 mile difference in the polar diameter as near the equatorial diameter. I bet that is bullshit also. If I'm going to use the great circle calculator. Polaris proves that we live on uh, an oblate spheroid. And the Haberstein formula includes the radius of the Earth as part of its calculations. So we can measure the oblateness. 
with the Hefferson formula. Huh, I'm going to try it in a minute. The great circle it is you know, what happens when you, you use the um, Hefferson formula to, to calculate your roots. A great circle root, a great circle root, which deals with the you great circle roots. The Haversheim formula is what is used to calculate the distance in great circle roots. Uh, it's also used by pilots to navigate great circle roots and submarine captains. That's because that's how calculations for distances are done, using the Haversheim formula and the great circle root. You calculate great circle roots, the Haversheim formula to calculate great circle roots. Great circle roots. Well, actually, that's a great circle. Look at great circle roots. Great circle. Great circle. The radius right, right, of a, right. a radius of a sphere can be measured by by calculating the distance on the outside of that sphere. Great circle. The great circle calculation for great circle. Haverstein calculation is what pilots use to calculate great circle roots. Formula. Haverstein formula. That tells the difference between two points. The distance between two points using a great circle route. This is the great circle route, great circle. They do great circle routes. Great circle routes, great circle routes. Oh, no, route. a, a great circle point is a great circle. Oh, and, and, and a great circle will bisect a sphere into two equal parts. Then that line of bisection is a great circle. Great circle route, a great circle route. So the, the great circle route would be to go south and then come back up. That's gonna be the, the straight route across. And, and there's ships all over the ocean that are traveling on great circle routes. G great circle routes. Great circle routes. Great circle route. The uh, great circle mapper. The uh, great circle. And here is the great circle. All right, the Haversheim formula determines the great circle distance between two points on a sphere, given their longitudes and latitudes. Important in navigation it is a special case of a more general formula in spherical trigonometry, the law of Haversheim's, that relates the sides and angles of spherical triangles. But it looks like in Google Earth. The Haversheim formula to calculate distances on a globe. Let's use the Haversheim formula to calculate the oblateness. The great circle calculator. The globe is like it a lot. Because it proved the oblateness. <laughs> okay, let's see. We're here on the equator at the prime meridian. And we are going to move 180 degrees east. I cannot do 180 degrees with this program. So we do 179.99. That's only a 1.1 kilometer less. So let's uh, first do a uh, statue miles. 12,428. We need to double that amount of course to 24,856 miles. Let's do kilometer now. 20,000 kilometer. So we add uh, two kilometer more. 20,000 to two kilometer. And we need to double it of course to 40,000 and uh, four kilometers. So here we are uh, moving from the 90 latitude north on the prime meridian to the 90 at latitude south on the prime meridian. Let's first do a uh, statue miles. Oh, 12,428 kilometer 20,002 kilometer <laughs> Where is that 42 mile uh, oblateness? The, the oblateness, the difference is um, 42 miles difference in the polar uh, circumference to the equatorial circumference. So if you were to measure the circumference around the equator, it'd be 42 miles more than the circumference around the poles. But slightly flattened at the poles and slightly wider at the equator due to its rotation. Can we assume the globe is not spinning because it's not wider at the equator? Oh, you pieces of shit think this data is incorrect? Well, then I suggest you to uh, write some emails to NOAA 
and complain. As a sailor, as someone who's in the Royal Navy and actually had to do these calculations, I can tell you for a fact they used the Haversine formula. Well, I actually did it myself, so um, you use the Haversine formula. That is a fact, therefore navigation is based on the globe. On the globe? Why don't you say oblate spheroid, idiot? The Haversine formula is based on a perfect sphere. You read that? <laughs> fuck you, fuck you very, very much. Why second? Cause we hate what, what you do, and we hate your crew. So please don't stay in touch. Why second? Fuck you, fuck you very, very much. Why second? Cause your words don't translate. And the earth still oblate, so please don't be a twat. Bisec. Fuck you. Bisec. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat 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 Fight the